Welcome to English Storyteller. Learn English through story. The podcast that helps you improve your English one story at a time. I'm Mr. Storyteller, your host. Today's episode is perfect for intermediate learners. So get ready to dive into an exciting tale. In this episode, we'll dive into a captivating tale titled The Mirror of Two Lives. Have you ever wondered what happens when someone faces a choice between two parallel lives? What would you choose? The life you once left behind or the new one you've built? The story we're sharing today is about a woman who discovers a mysterious connection between her present and her past through her kitchen freezer. It's a journey of heartbreak, rediscovery, and the painful decisions we sometimes face in life. Okay, I'll just explain some words that are in today's story. Freeze, froze, when something becomes very cold and turns to ice. Example, water freezes to become ice. A freezer is a very cold box where we store frozen food. Cheek, the part of your face between your mouth and ear. In some cultures, people kiss on the cheek to greet each other. Pick at, to pull small pieces off something. Example, picking at food when not hungry or picking at skin due to anxiety. Kid, an informal word for child. People often say, my kids, instead of my children, in everyday speech. For example, I'm taking my kids to the park. Nightmare. A nightmare is a bad, scary dream that can wake you up. It often feels real and can happen because of stress or fear. Waking up from a nightmare usually brings relief. Gooseberry, a small green fruit with a sour taste, often used to make jams or desserts. It has tiny hairs on its skin and is usually sweetened when cooked. Cliff, a high, steep rock face, often found by the sea or in mountains. Falling off a cliff is very dangerous due to the long drop. Famous cliffs include the White Cliffs of Dover in England. Sober, not drunk or under the influence of alcohol. To sober up means to stop being drunk, often by drinking water or eating. People who stop drinking alcohol completely are also described as sober. Alcoholics. Anonymous, AA, helps people stay sober. Way, way up. To measure how heavy something is or consider a decision's pros and cons. Example, weigh up the benefits of two options before deciding. Parallel universe. A concept where different worlds exist with small differences. These are sometimes called mirror worlds, like reflections with subtle changes. You've already learned some new words today. If you're enjoying the podcast and want to support me, consider becoming a member. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss a story. Thank you so much for your amazing support. Now, sit back. Relax and enjoy the story. I was sad. I was strong and I was clever and I had a good job and I loved my husband and my children loved me. But I was sad. I thought I was happy. I must be happy, I thought, because sad people don't wake up and kiss their husbands on the cheek. Sad people don't bake fresh bread and bring toast to their children in bed. Sad people don't go for a run and have an ice-cold shower before work. I wasn't happy, of course. Happy people don't pick at their cheeks until they go red. Happy people don't say, I'm not hungry and watch their kids eat supper. 
happy people don't read books until 4am and then have nightmares. But life continued. I counted the days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I counted the months. April, May, June, July. I counted the years. Of course, there was no end. I didn't want an end. I was afraid of an end. When my husband said, when the kids grow up and leave home, I felt as cold as ice and I wanted to say no. Then, one day, I opened the freezer door. It was a hot summer's day. I was getting ice cream for the kids, gooseberry ice cream that I had made. But when I opened the freezer door, I did not see frozen carrots and gooseberry ice cream. I saw my kitchen. The freezer was like a mirror. But inside the freezer, the kitchen was empty. I could not see myself in that kitchen. I could not see myself in that world. Mom, called my daughter from outside. I froze. I loved my children. I would close this door and open it again, and then the strange mirror kitchen would be gone, and I would see the frozen carrots and gooseberry ice cream, and everything would be normal. I started to close the door. Mom, called my son. My hand stopped. I looked behind me. I saw my children for a second. I saw the love in their eyes. Then I climbed into the freezer and shut the door. I'm sorry, I said, but my words were eaten by the ice. In the first year, I thought a lot about going back. I opened and closed the freezer again and again, but I always saw the same things. Frozen carrots and chocolate ice cream. I tried emptying the freezer, taking everything out. That didn't work. I tried making gooseberry ice cream and putting the frozen carrots exactly where they had been before. That didn't work. I tried opening the freezer door at midnight when I couldn't sleep. That didn't work. By the second year, I had stopped trying. I lived my new life and tried not to think about the old one. Was I happier here? Not really, but I was alone. I did not know why this narrow world was different, why I had no husband or children here, but that was how it was. I was alone. And when you're alone, you can be sad. Nobody says, Mommy, why are you picking at your cheek? Nobody says, Did you have that nightmare again, love? So for five years, I fell. Alone. I fell into alcohol and partying and ice cream cheap ice cream from the shop. I did my work badly. I was often late. Finally, I lost my job. So I took a job in a bar. I started smoking. It felt good to be bad. But in year five, I almost died. I drank too much and went walking in the forest. I fell off a cliff and broke my neck. If someone hadn't come and found me, I would have died. And that was when I learned the truth. I did not want to die. There, at the bottom of the cliff, 
lying with a broken leg. And it hurt a lot, believe me, it hurts like nothing else. There, I learned that I did not want to die. So after that, it was five years of climbing. I went hard to make my leg better. I joined AA, went to meetings every week. I started going to the gym. I sobered up and I met a man at my gym. He made me think of my old husband. My old husband. I had lived in this world for so long. Sometimes I thought the other world was a nightmare and this was the real one. But then I remembered my old husband and my old kids. The man from the gym was a bit like my old husband, but his hair was shorter. Actually, he had lost most of it. He was also sober. Uh, he had stopped going to AA years before. He didn't need it anymore. We talked a lot about being sober. Alcoholics always talk a lot about being sober or not being sober. He was older than me, and I liked that. We both knew we were too old to have kids. And really, we didn't want kids. Slowly, this new man moved his things into my house. And by the end of the year, we were living together. It was nice. We had both been sad, and we had both fallen off a cliff, and now we stood together in a safe place. Slowly, I stopped thinking about the other place, the old place. This world became the real one, and the old place became the mirror world. One hot summer's day, we were sat in the garden reading. Shall I get us a drink? I said. Please, he said with lots of ice. So I went into the kitchen and opened the freezer door. You know what happens next. For a moment, I didn't know what I was looking at. They had changed the kitchen. There was a new floor and they had painted the walls, but I saw that old clock and realized it was my kitchen, my old kitchen. And then I saw them. My children were almost adults now. My son was sat at the table with a cup of tea, writing something, preparing for an exam. My daughter was playing on her phone. My heart thudded as I waited to see my husband. Was he there? Was he alive? Hello, I said. Then, hello, hello! But they couldn't see me or hear me. My daughter said something, and then I saw my husband. He was making drinks. He came to the freezer to get ice, and now he was standing right in front of me. I could see how much he had changed in ten years. Every new line on his face, every growl, how he was so close I could kiss him. Love, what are you shouting about? It sounds like fun. I froze. Behind me, my new husband called. In front of me, my old husband took ice out of the freezer, stood up, held his back, and said, Oh, I'm getting old. I couldn't hear, but I knew what he was saying. He had been saying that for about twenty years. A wall of ice stood between the new me and the old me. In a moment, the door would close and it might never open again. 
I had to choose between me and me. But really, I had to choose between him and Thun. I had to weigh the pain I had caused my old family against the pain I would cause my new husband. My old family had felt that pain already. They had made me lies. But the pain might be too much for my new man. It, it might kill him. What do you think I did? Did I go back to my old family, say sorry, tell them I was too sad and I had to leave? Did I leave my new husband out in the sun, throw him down a cliff so that he would never know what happened to me? Or did my old husband close the freezer door and make that decision for me? What I really wanted, what I really wanted, was to stay there. I wanted to stay in front of the freezer door and never close it. I wanted to stay in front of that mirror, to watch my old life and stay in my new life. I wanted to freeze that feeling, that horrible decision, and never move. This is when I am happiest. Maybe this is the only time I have been happy in both my lives. Every decision I could make was both right and wrong. I could choose to go or choose to stay, and I would be loving someone and hurting someone else. Both worlds were perfect mirrors, so why not live between them? We think that pain is a heavy. We say that pain weighs more than anything in the world. But in that moment, and only in that moment, I was as light as air. If you like the story, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your support means a lot to me. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you again soon.